Hi, uh, so in the previous video, I introduced what the um, homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity mean. And uh, the diff they look difficult, but the idea is very simple. And, uh, and remember, we had three assumptions uh, to justify the regression model. One is conditional mean zero assumption, and, uh, and the second is the IID assumption, and uh, third, rare outliers assumption. And when I was a college student, I learned homoscedasticity as the fourth assumption. So still there are many textbooks out there uh, that have the fourth assumption uh, uh, of homoscedasticity. However, uh, the, uh, the authors of this textbook are huge proponents of heteroscedasticity, and they are they are very like uh, renowned uh, scholars, uh, like maybe professor at Princeton and Harvard. So they are not wrong, but so and as the time changes, the theory becomes more complicated. And these days, the fourth assumption is removed, and you you are you learn something new than uh, what I learned. Anyhow, so uh, now the fourth assumption, for the fourth assumption, these two things, these two guys are competing. competing. So uh, let's think about what happens, what I learned uh, when I had the homoscedasticity assumption. When the homoscedasticity assumption holds, then as you may expect, there are a lot of things uh, like a lot of a lot of nice things can happen like the formula becomes simpler and many nice properties can be proven easier so that's what i learned uh, when i was a student first i'm going to just give you the intuition what what happens first when you have homoscedasticity assumption you can show that your ols estimator your estimator has the lowest variance lowest variance which means so usually the variance of an estimator captures the the uh, the accuracy of the estimator so the smaller the variance is the more accurate the estimator is so the smaller the more accurate therefore and you can show that mathematically you can prove that your OLS estimator it has the lowest variance if you have the homoscedasticity assumption so that means your estimator is the best, simply the best. This is a very, a very powerful theory because at, like given this theory, you don't need to worry about uh, like uh, having a better estimator than this, right? This is the best. So this result is called Gauss Markov theorem. So this, the famous mathematician Gauss has proven this. Uh, and, but it does not hold when there is no homoscedasticity assumption. So, but still OLS is good enough. We know OLS is uh, still very good. So that, that's the first thing you lose when you don't have homoscedasticity. And second thing that I learned, but you, uh, you may not uh, have learned, is that when you have homoscedasticity assumption, the variance of the estimator is simplified a lot to this. It depends only on three things. Numerator is the variance, variance of the error term, and denominator has sample size and the variance of the regressor. I can explain what they are. So first, uh, the denominator, let's look at the denominator first. The sample size, the, the more sample you have, the better you can do, the more accurate your estimator will be, which is obvious. So if you have larger data, you can do better. So uh, the variance of the estimator is inversely proportional to the sample size. Okay, intuitive, natural. And second, uh, the variance of the regressor. I have explained this idea earlier in the last in the in the last chapter so you remember i compare two cases when you have 
uh, two observations narrow, like uh, close to each other, and alternatively uh, far from each other, then when you have a wider base, your estimator is more stable. Stable against the uh, potential error. So the, the more variation you have on x, then the more accurate, the more stable your estimator is. So the smaller the variance is. And finally, the numerator. Numerator is the variance of the error term. And if the variance of the error term is large, that means your, your data have more noise. So which means this dispersion will be much bigger. So from the trend regression line, data will be further away from the regression line. So uh, on average, there will be larger noises and errors. So your estimator will be less accurate. So a uh, larger variance of the error term implies larger variance of the estimator, which implies a uh, lower accuracy. So, uh, so when I was a student, I, it was easier to understand how we get the variance and the formula itself is simple and it was also easier to interpret what's going on. But as you, as you have seen, like as I did before, now without the homoscedasticity assumption, the variance formula becomes much more complicated. Uh, so I simply, I don't show you, well, like it, it, this is the formula, but um, it's, it's not easy to explain. So that's another thing we miss after dropping the homoscedasticity assumption. And uh, then, then, and then the problem here is, we so as I said, so if you have the homoscedasticity assumption, you can calculate the standard error based on this simple uh, formula. But if you don't have homoscedasticity assumption, then you have to calculate the standard error through this this formula using this formula. So it is much more complicated. And uh, yeah, this is the formula. You don't need to know, but this is what it is. Uh, and uh, excuse me, it, it is homoscedasticity standard error formula. So this is the formula when you have the homoscedasticity uh, assumption. If you don't have that assumption, it will become more complicated. I was confused. Sorry about the confusion. So this is still simpler case and uh, it's a homoscedasticity case. But the problem here is, as I said, many years ago, <laughs> many years ago, the homoscedasticity assumption is kind of default, was the default. So many softwares use the homoscedasticity assumption as the default way to calculate the, calculate the standard error like Excel, Stata, and many, many softwares automatically calculate uh, the standard errors like by simple command, but uh, without, if you don't add any, any different options, then the, the default is homoscedasticity uh, case, which is, which may be wrong. This assumption may be wrong and then your calculation will be wrong. So that's the problem. So the default formula in the softwares are valid only when the assumption is true. So, so the, the authors of this textbook uh, calls for the use of a robust standard error formula. So that is called heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. So even if the model is heteroscedastic, uh, still the standard errors, standard error formula uh, survives. So it is robust. Uh, and I understand it is important and it is not that difficult. It is not that difficult to implement the robust standard error because anyhow, you are not going to use uh, the formula by yourself. It's 
it's calculated by the program. So what you need to do is you need just need to set, you need to add an option uh, of the for the robust standard errors. Okay. And then what hap um so that is a big problem actually because because when you ignore when you use the default when you use the default standard error formula and if the assumption if the homoscedasticity assumption is wrong then you are underestimating the standard errors so remember standard errors is to capture the accuracy of the estimator so you know that your estimator is is not perfect so you would like to estimate the accuracy but the if you use a wrong wrong formula then your accuracy measure is overestimating the accuracy so you are so suppose that your estimator is as accurate as like say 5 out of 10 points so that is so it's just barely the average barely the average or not so accurate but like if you use a wrong formula then suppose that you get 9 out of 10 points which is uh, more accurate then this may cause uh, so the truth is 5 not so accurate but but you your program uh, shows as if it's super accurate that is more dangerous because if you know that your estimator can be wrong then you will be more careful in interpreting the results but if you go the other way if you are if you are overestimating yourself if you are too much confident in your estimation then you may make some conclusions that's that should not be made right so so like if you know the truth you cannot say that the uh, student teacher ratio has a super strong effect on test scores but because of the wrong formula you may conclude that student to teacher ratio has a huge impact on on the on the test scores and then because of this wrong conclusion it may waste a lot of uh, like resources like uh, you don't need to you don't need to like hire more teachers but you you make a wrong conclusion so you may waste money on, on hiring additional teachers but students test scores don't don't get better so so you have to be careful and it's important point and uh and how we how do we implement that so so far i just explained why we need to consider heteroscedasticity and the conclusion is this so at the end of the day how do you what you have to do simply put robust at the end of the command so remember regress test score on student to teacher ratio so in the homework one this is all you need to do so the, your command was up to this point but uh, the authors uh, argue that you have to use comma robust so simply putting comma and put the option robust will give you a robust standard errors and your result will show this form by the way once if you have robust standard error formula then you don't get the the sum of squared errors or sum of uh sum of square total sum of squares or sum of like estimated sum of squares so these the there was uh, another table on the left uh, top left side but that will not be provided because the formula the sum of squared analysis was also based on homoskinesticity assumption still r squared is calculated but uh sse ssr sst are not calculated anymore but now usually that's not a big problem we only need something like this a squared or root mean squared error which is called the standard error of regression in the textbook ser in the textbook and now this part is changed robust standard error and uh, the standard errors are usually larger than the default standard error uh, formulas 
okay uh, so okay uh, I will continue in the next video see you later